We begin with breaking developments in Iraq. U.S. airstrikes and tonight, the new images coming in. F-18 fighter jets racing across the skies over northern Iraq and dropping precision 500-pound guided bombs. These images of the aftermath, the plume of smoke off in the distance. Tonight, one of the top concerns for the White House, the Americans on the ground in Iraq, diplomats and military advisors, and the desperate families trapped on a mountain without food and water. And in Washington, President Obama, seen through the window of the Oval Office today, a president who once campaigned to end the war in Iraq, now facing this. Tonight, so many here at home asking why now, who are we trying to help, and how long will this last? Our team on the breaking story, John Carl at the White House, but first, our chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz, leading us off tonight. Martha, good evening. Good evening, David. The U.S. military now has a green light to launch airstrikes as needed in Iraq, today pounding multiple targets, trying to stop the militants from advancing and from threatening American lives and the lives of thousands of Iraqi families trapped on that mountain. The first strike, 12.45 p.m. Iraq time, broad daylight. Two heavily armed F-18 fighter jets launching from the carrier USS Bush in the Persian Gulf, roaring high above northern Iraq where ISIS militants were at work shelling forces trying to defend the critical city of Erbil, where 150 American diplomats and military advisors are based. The U.S. fighter jets dropping precision 500-pound bombs on the ISIS mobile artillery unit. The smoke from the laser-guided bomb strike visible for miles. You let the bomb go straight and level and the bomb finds its way to the target. Then, four hours later, 5.45 p.m., it was an armed drone launching a Hellfire missile at a mortar position. When militant fighters returned to the site, the drone struck again. 6.20 p.m., Four more F-18s targeting a seven-vehicle militant convoy. The Pentagon says a total of eight bombs dropped, neutralizing the convoy and a mortar launcher. The strikes being called as needed to try to stop the advance on Erbil and to keep those Americans safe. Meanwhile, that other mission, to save lives on that mile-high mountain, at the top, tens of thousands of members of a religious minority trapped for days by the ISIS militants, threatening them with death. Today, these images, Iraqi helicopters mobbed by the starving Yazidi people, children lifted up to safety. The U.S. helping, too, dropping in food and water in the cover of night. These cargo airplanes, which are not very maneuverable, and so they're actually more vulnerable, which is why we did it at night, so it would be harder to see them. And Martha's back with us live now from Washington. And Martha, U.S. authorities trying to protect Americans on the ground there. Many might be asking, why not get the Americans out to evacuate them? Well, the White House says because they're doing important work in Erbil, but it really is bigger than that. Erbil is a key city, and those who live there, loyal allies to the U.S., the Americans do not want that city to fall, David, because surely ISIS would then try to go after Baghdad. All right, Martha, thanks.